Hello and welcome to another top 10 video! We've done those in the past, it's been a long while, it's been like a month. This has turned into like a monthly thing, which wasn't what this was intended to be. Uh, the only monthly series I planned to do was um, tier 2 montages, but oh well. Um, maybe after the um, Christmas period they will be turning up a bit more frequently. Who knows? Why don't you just tune in after the Christmas period? Actually, no. Why don't you tune in over the Christmas period and see all the Christmas fun we're going to have? Um, that's beside the point. Today's top ten is my top ten characters in Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Um, yeah, I didn't really have much planned for today, so I was just like, uh, what can I do as a top ten? And all of my top 10 so far, at least, have been gaming related. We've done about four Pokemon related ones, followed by uh, Sonic vocal songs. Be sure to check those out in the playlist or on my channel, they're all around somewhere. Um, so we're continuing the gaming theme with Nintendo y, Sega y fun. Um, and we have Brawl characters. Um, yeah. Um, not really much more I can say about Brawl characters other than just diving straight into the top 10, so yeah, see you in the top 10 list. Number 10. Okay, so coming in at the number 10 spot is none other than Bowser, the big Koopa villain from the Mario series. He got he's in Smash. He was introduced into Smash on the second installment, which would be Melee, uh, Brawl being the third, obviously. Um, so yeah, Bowser, he's um, one of the heavier dudes in the game. Dude. Um, he does ground poundy things with his most of his specials. He has fire and stuff. And he's generally slower but hard hitting, but I kind of like him. He's not my f but, uh, by far my favourite, but there are quite a few characters that I like a lot less than him. Uh, who are not going to be on this list because they suck. Uh, but, you know, so um, Bowser, uh, his final smash is also not that bad. I mean, he has the big Giga Bowser, as they say, um, as it's, well, as it's known. Giga Bowser, basically, he just becomes bigger, big, big, big Bowser, uh, big angry Bowser. Uh, and he just hits harder when he's bigger Bowser, um, as you'd expect. So yeah, um, Bowser is at number 10 on my lovely, lovely list. Number 9. Coming in at number 9, we have the replacement for my favourite melee character. Uh, spoilers if I ever do a melee list, which I'm probably not going to. We have Lucario. Lucario was put in Brawl because they decided that Mewtwo, who they have now brought back in the new version in the new Smash Bros. game, uh, Smash Bros. for the 3DS and Wii U, um, was too overpowered because he was a legendary. Um, this was clearly wrong because they could have just balanced him however they wanted, but you know, and it kind of annoyed me at first to be fair because Lucario is clearly um, inferior to Mewtwo in every single way, but um, at the same time, he's not a bad character to play as, he has his general. Or a sphere thing, uh, which is blue. Um, don't remember it being blue in the games. It might have been blue. It doesn't really make sense though. I mean, it's a fighting type movie. You'd expect it to be like brown or something, red kind of color. Um, but he has that. Uh, um, can't remember the name of his final smash now off the top of my head. It's some kind of like aura blast or something. Basically, he flies up in the air and shoots a huge laser, which you can move around for like a short period of time. Um, uh, it's pretty easy to dodge, though, if you're not a complete noob. So, um... Yeah, but he's still good, he has a variety of stuff. He's quite floaty, so they kind of took that from Mewtwo. He's not as bad as Mewtwo was with the floatiness, but, um... He is still quite floaty. Um... Uh, he doesn't literally float, though, so that's something, but, you know... Yeah, so Lucario is our number 9 pick. Or my number 9 pick. I don't know if there's no one else here with me. I'm all alone. Lucario. Number 8. 
Okay, so we have for the number eight pick, we have the hero of Hyrule, um, the green fairy man himself. We have Link. If that wasn't clear by my description, then you are clearly not Nintendo fans, and why? Well, whatever. Not the point. Not the point. Um, Link has had like two clone characters in over the course of the last two games. Um, and the reason that Toon Link, being his clone character from Brawl, did not make the cut is because he is stupid and not a real character. Um, sorry for all you Toon Link fans out there, but Toon Link is just Link. They just created a completely new character based off of Link to, uh, and how his graphic style was in Wind Waker. But that was the same character, so it's stupid. Stupid's very stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So, we have the proper Link on here, who is basically exactly the same, just better, and with better graphic animations and stuff. So, he has his sword, and he does his sword attacks, and he can throw bombs and shoot arrows and throw hurricane boomerangs and stuff, which is all very well and good. His final smash is... I think it's called Trifle Smash. Oh my, I'm sounding really nasally. Um, yeah, Triforce Smash. You basically just shoot along the stage until you find a dude and then you wreck him with your Triforce slushy powers. Uh, one of the... not. It's an alright Final Smash. It's not one of my favourites, but it's, it's not anything bad. I mean, you do a decent chunk. You're not guaranteed to wreck anyone with it, though, which is a pain in the bum. Because you could, like, Triforce Smash them and then they're just like, Oh no, I'm still alive. And then they kill you. And it's like, oh, boohoo. But yeah, so we have Link at our number 8 spot today. Number 7. For the number 7 spot on this list, we decided to revisit the Kingdom of Hyrule. But this time, we are on the other side. We are evil. We are Ganondorf. That is our pick for number 7. Ganondorf, um... For want of a better description, is basically just like Captain Falcon, just slower. Um, he moves incredibly slowly, like uh, Bowser does. Um, most of his attacks revolve around punching things with his weird purple aura he has. Um, I think his special move is called Warlock Punch, I believe. Um, it's basically just a rip of. Captain Falcon's Falcon Punch, but it's cool, it's purple, and it really does do a lot of damage if you can land it, and it's very cool, and he does a lot of slidey things if you use his down and his aerials. I'm not sure what his side one is, I believe that's not his dash, because that's what his down one is. But yeah, his final smash is like Beast Ganondorf, I believe it's called, or something. Um, he basically turns into a, the big pig version of big minotaur thing from like the original Ganon art and he just like does a massive rush off the stage and wrecks everyone in his path um so that's pretty cool um yeah there's not really much else I can say about Ganondorf um he plays a pretty big role in the um subspace emissary story thing or misery rather not emissary I always get those the words confused um so yeah he, that bit was cool I mean he like was the body of the master hand and then he like wrecked everyone with his like OP cannon which they kind of glazed over and got wrecked really easily by Kirby spoilers if you haven't played that uh, you totally should but yeah, anyway, uh, number seven, we have Ganondorf. Number six. Coming in at the number six spot on the list, we have um, a character that is three characters in one from the Pokemon franchise. We have Pokemon Trainer. Pokemon Trainer has the ability to switch between three different Pokemon, being Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard. Uh, why they picked those three in particular, I will not know. But, you know, uh, I think he's supposed to be based off of Red from the original Pokemon games. Um, I just get the overall feel from that from his design. Um, 
Um, so they all have their merits, each of the Pokemon. Uh, my personal favourite would be Ivysaur, so let's talk about him first. Ivysaur uh, is a pro at dealing like, rapid damage, but he has no smash attacks. Uh, he can do Bullet Seed, which for some reason goes upwards. He does um, Vine Whip, which is pretty badass. He just like slaps you. Um, he does. He has Razor Leaf. Um, a couple of other like weird spore grass things where he like lunges his body and stuff. Um, but like I said, he has no proper like massive damage attacks. So if you're trying to kill anyone, it's really a big pain in the ass, as Ivy saw. So that's when the kind of time you would change to Charizard, um, who can do the fire breathing thing that Bowser can do. Yet he also has Rock Smash. Uh, and his up aerial is similar to Fox's up aerial, where he like just shoots upwards in a burst of flames and stuff. And then he has various amounts of like tail swaps and. Swaps is now a word. He swaps you with his tail, uh, as is like other boring attacks. Um, occasional like headbutt and stuff. And then Squirtle, he can do like shoot water at you, and I think his up special is water fall, and which apparently makes you go up. Uh, last time I checked, waterfalls go down. That probably should be his down thing, but oh well. Uh, and he does the thing where he's like in his little shell and he spins around and shoots water everywhere. It's kind of like in the anime where he uses Hydro Pump and goes inside his shell. Never understood that, but you know, I'm not going to complain. Um, and then their final smash is a combined final smash, which is triple finish, in which they all team up to do a big attack, which clearly Ivysaur's is like the best out of the three, because uh, they all at the same time do, I think it's Hydro Cannon for Squirtle, or Hydro Pump, some kind of water move that's really lame and fl like flies everywhere. Uh, flamethrower for Charizard and Solar Beam for Ivysaur. Solar Beam clearly being the best because it just like cuts straight through the stage while the other two just kind of like flail around the sides of the Solar Beam, not being as badass. But it's still pretty cool to see all three of them like ripping through the stage at the same time. It's pretty easy to dodge because it happens where you stand so you can just jump over them and then not get wrecked. But yeah. Pokemon Trainer is my number six pick. Um, yeah. Number five. Coming in for number five, we have Ike, the dude, the dude with the blue hair from Fire Emblem, with the red cape and the gold sword, the cool one, unlike Marth, who's not going to be appearing on this list, or Roy, who's not in Brawl and can't be appearing on this list. Uh, yeah, so we have Ike here. He's not really that great. Um, actually he is, that's why he's number 5 on my list. Um, he's a pain in the butt to fight against because of all his attacks. He does like, he's very fast and very hard hitting which is a very good combination in Smash Bros because that's kind of all the two things you need. You need to hit hard and you need to do it fast before your opponent does it to you and completely wrecks your ass. Um, his up aerial is a bit of a pain, you can die from it, but otherwise it's pretty good. His final smash is basically a guaranteed kill, unless you're hitting them from 0%. He has a weird, like, fire stab thing, which does, like, a ton of damage. He has a weird, like, slashy thing as his side. I believe it's his side, not his neutral. Uh, can't remember what his down is. Maybe his down is the flame one. Who knows? Maybe you should just play as him and find out. I'm not really here to tell you all about what they do. I'm just telling you why I like them. Yeah, so he hits hard. He hits fast. Um, and that can be a really big pain in the ass to counter against. And most of the time people just get flustered and wrecked. So, you know. Yeah. You can also juggle with him, which is the biggest pain in the ass, uh, where in which you just hit your enemies into the air over and over, uh, which also for some reason they decided was a brilliant idea to give him stun on, so that you can just knock them into the air into a position where they can't retaliate against you, um, and then before they land you can hit them back and juggle them until they have enough damage where the next hit will just send them flying. And then you do that, and then they die, and they don't even hit you, and it's really stupid. Um, obviously, that only works on certain stages, because obviously, if the stage has a roof, then you're just like, well, no, that doesn't work. Um, but it is a big pain in the butt um, if you're playing against it. So, yeah. Ike. 
Number four. Okay, so for the number four pick, um, we mentioned him earlier when talking about Ganondorf. We have the main and only character from F Zero. We have Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon being the the blue dude with the the red helmet. Um, with the Falcon Punch, he does all the flame attacks. That's like really cool. Uh, um. He's basically just a faster Ganondorf. Um, it, he still takes a while with like his Falcon Punch and his kicks and stuff, but they are just as devastating. Um, he has for a final smash. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's like blue something. It's the name of his vehicle. Um, basically, if you manage to hit anyone, it's basically a guaranteed kill. Um, it's really precise timing, but otherwise it's just like lol bye bye. Um, it hits them onto a racetrack where you then run into, like, drive into them and wreck them completely, and then they fly off the stage. It's pretty badass, so no complaints from me. Um, so yeah, Captain Falcon number four. Not really much else I can say. Number three. So, coming in at the number three spot now, we have Meta Knight. Um, Meta Knight is generally regarded as the best character in the game. He's in the highest of the tier list. Um, however, he isn't mine. He, I, As much as I see his potential, I don't think he's as broken as everyone claims he is. Um, so, you know. But, um... Meta Knight, what can I say about him? He, most of his attacks aren't that hard hitting, which is his main problem. Uh, fast, he is like insanely fast. He can hit people in massive rapid succession. Uh, all of his attacks are like fast hitting, low damage ones. Uh, he has many rapid attacks. He has the, mm, I think it's called the Max Tornado or something like that. Uh, basically, he spins around and orange lines come out of him. Uh, he has, like, a lot of recovery moves, which is one of his main strong points. Um, and his neutral attack, not special attack, just neutral attack, um, is just, like, a ton of swords everywhere, and... Yeah, that's pretty good attack, to be fair, so I like that. Um, so yeah, not really much else I can say. His final smash is a bit booty, to be fair. You have to be very precise with your timing, you have to like hook an enemy in your cape thing and then it like slashes them but if you do then it slashes everyone on the stage which doesn't really make any sense of how that works so yeah it's best not to question it I think um, so yeah coming in for number three be Meta Knight number two coming in at number two we have Falco Falco being the the blue Falcon Man thing from Star Fox. Uh, out of the Star Fox characters that you have available to you in the game, he is by far my favourite. Um, Fox is um, clearly a second uh, out of the th three. Uh, Wolf is a bit um, crap, to be completely fair. Uh, most of the attack... They're all basically the same, but most of Wolf's versions of the attacks are weaker and misdirected and crap. Um, then Fox Fox is pretty good actually. Um, he's basically the same as Falco, just Falco is faster, which makes Falco better. Um, also, Falco shoots blue bullets, which is also better uh, because reasons. Um, so yeah, Falco. He has his gun. He has his tornado thing instead of Falco uh, Fox having his kicks. Uh, the tornado thing is quite useful, it's quite good. Uh, he has his, like, blink dash thing, which, like, stuns dudes and damage, damage which is a brutal big pain in the ass on a small stage, because you just fly off the edge. Um, he has his reflector, which is, like, really powerful if you know how to use it right. Um, blocks projectiles, and then you can kick it at them, and then it wrecks them. Um, he has also got the flame thing that um, Fox does as his aerial, where he shoots up and does flames, which is pretty cool. Um, and last but not least, he has, um, Landmass as his final smash. Um, 
he of uh, they all have landmaster if you know how to use landmaster it turns out that the bullets are not the most effective way of killing people with the landmaster it's to get people to stand on the top and then fly off the top of the screen and watch them fall off as you just like fly back down going lol 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 as you have claimed an easy kill um so yeah falco lombardi is my number two pick number one Okay, so for the number one pick of this list, we have the, clearly the most superior character since Melee when they were first introduced. Um, we have the classic duo um, who were removed from the new game, which I'm still very salty about. Because um, Duck Hunt is clearly not a better duo character compared to Ice Climbers. Um, so yeah, Ice Climbers is my number one pick. They got second on the tier ranking, getting a ranking of their own like Meta Knight did, which I believe is the S tier. Meta Knight being in the SS tier, which is like better than S. He's better than S. But I do not agree with this. I believe that Ice Climbers are superior. Um, yeah, so Ice Climbers, what can I say about them? They have a massive variety of ice attacks. Um, they can shoot ice projectiles that slide along the stage, they can shoot ice freezy things that if you get too close you take damage and you get frozen. They have hammers and they can do like a spin attack. They um, have their yo-yo thing which means they can jump like extra high which works not very well when Nana is dead. Um, Nana can die and Popo can keep going um, without Nana so that's always a plus. Um, their final smash is pretty good too to be fair. Um, most of the stages get completely engulfed by it. Um, it doesn't work as well in custom stages, I must add, but um, it is still pretty good all the same. Um, it is they summon a big ice mountain. I don't. I think it's just called like iceberg or something stupid like that. But um, basically, a huge big ice mountain comes out of the stage, and anyone who touches it gets either fro gets frozen and damaged, and sent gets sent flying back. Um, it doesn't really work on the big custom stages or um, the big Newport City, which is like the worst stage in the world. Um, but yeah, it's still pretty good. Um, Final Smash, I like. Um, and that's really all I can say about them. Uh, they are my favorite character. I play them like 50% of the time. So yeah, number one, Nana and Popo, the Ice Climbers. So yeah, that about concludes my top 10 list for this time. I, don't, I was going to say week, and then I realised that we don't do top 10s every week. Um, I would very, very quickly run out of ideas if we did. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave comments telling me if you agree with any of the placements on my list, what you would put at number one on your list if you made this list yourself. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, um, be sure to check out the previous top 10s, and be sure to check out my other videos, we've reached 26 episodes of Pokemon Blue, uh, 50 TCG battles, we we're making good headway into Sonic Adventure 2, as big of a pain in the ass as it's being, um, and yeah, we, we generally have quite a bit of fun on my channel, we did some Pokemon TCG booster pack opening last week. Be sure to check that out um, if that's your cup of tea, as they say. Um, yeah, I'm going to be heading off now. So have a nice day. Good, good show. Jolly good. Ha ha. All this, all that jazz. Um, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.